This graph compares the impact of 11 post-war recessions. On the left axis, we measure the percentage of jobs lost during each downturn. Indexing the start of each recession to a common value of 100 enables us to measure and compare the depth of each downturn without worrying about changes in the size of the economy across this era. Job loss is plotted by month from the onset of each recession until the point at which jobs recover their pre-recession levels. Again, the common starting point enables us to measure and compare the duration of each succeeding downturn. The recession of 1948, for example, lasted about 20 months, and employment shrank to about 95% of its pre-recession peak. The next four recessions, beginning in 1953, in 1957, in 1960, and in 1969, were of similar depth and duration. The recession which began in 1973 was longer, although the employment impact was delayed. The 1980 downturn was short-lived, but only because it was superseded by the double-dip recession, which began in the summer of 1981 and dragged on for two more years. Although less severe in its blow to employment, the 1990 recession followed the trend towards longer-lasting downturns. It took 30 months for jobs to recover. The 2001 recession was a little deeper still and dragged on for nearly four full years be between employment peaks. And the current downturn, which began in December 2007, is clearly the worst of the bunch, cutting deeper into the job base than any of the other post-war recessions and showing little sign of recovery. The small uptick in jobs 30 months in is caused by temporary hiring for the 2010 census. Otherwise, the projected recovery to pre-recession employment is years away.